Hello, Professor Cassins. This is me, David Giroux, and I'm here to once again showcase my VR Tron project. Uh, just to recap, it is a networked server based multiplayer game. Uh, it allows up to four possible clients to join a server instance, and yeah, uh, anyone who's watched the Tron movies knows what the light cycles are all about. It's basically just a multiplayer snake clone, and you get to drive around and try to force your friends to crash. Uh, I apologize for the brevity of, of this video, but I have this is the third time I have done it because pop-ups keep happening while I'm in VR and I can't see those pop-ups and they've ruined the whole video. So I'm gonna try to keep this one relatively short. If I can. Okay, so to start, we're gonna start up our server and ooh, trippy OBS, get out of here. Uh, as you can see, it's just like command line looking like server. There is a Unity project attached to this, and you can run it through that Unity project. Uh, it's very useful that way, actually, for debugging. But this is like what I would want a user to see. It removes all the graphics and thus increases performance. Uh, let's go ahead and close this. OK, now we are going to log in our player one, which I'm going to use the Unity project for because there's a setting in here that I have set. Uh, that'll skip the menu, and that'll just make our lives a lot easier because this is an AI opponent anyway. Um, so we can see our AI opponent is currently tied to my VR stuff, um, but he's just going to go sh straight through that wall dead ahead. Because we are going to be playing as player two. Uh, nice fancy background. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Player two. And we're going to use the build for player two because it, it doesn't have that skip menu hack built into it. All right, let me get the VR headset on my head and we'll be ready to get started. All right, here we are at the main menu. Uh, it is here that you can type in your name. Well, you can try to type in your name. Um, ray casting as a means of using a keyboard is a pain. I want Bob. Here we go. It, I've noticed that the further you move the keyboard away, the more accurate the rays are. Um, so that's just something I need to continually work on is move the keyboard further away and then make the keyboard bigger so you can still see it like approximately the same size. Uh, but yeah, you can type in your username. You can type in the IP address and port. Uh, right now the server only does port 2550. At some point I will do a configuration file and it'll just read that file for the port. IP address. Um, IP address. There's no like specific IP address section in the server. It just uses whatever your computer is. Um, so if I wanted to type in an external IP address, if somebody else was running the server, this would definitely, it should work. I've done it myself. Uh, but in this case, because the server is on the same machine, it's just using the local host IP address. And that's, I've put as the default. So I could put 127.0.0.1, I believe in here if I wanted, but there's no point since I, I know it's going to be the local host. I'm just going to leave it blank and save me a lot of trouble. Typing. So here we are in the game. Uh, as you can see, our AI opponent is to my left, and as soon as one of us crashes, the game restarts. Uh, now, for testing purposes, I did remove the AI opponent's ability to crash. Um, that is editable by a boolean inside the server's project. Um, so that way, the server does reset every 8 seconds when he crashes into the wall. That would make testing kind of a pain, and I wouldn't really be able to showcase him a lot. So, as we can see, I can drive the bike by moving my hands to where the bars are and then gripping them, you know, just like that. And once I've gripped them, all that's being done is the, the, the client is sending a relative angle between my two hands to the server, and it is using that angle to both lean the bike, well, leaning of the bike actually happens to the client, uh, but it sends that lean to the server, and the server will then calculate you know, how much to turn the bike by. I mentioned earlier that this is a server authoritative multiplayer game and just what that means is the server is responsible for handling pretty much everything that a player could possibly want to cheat with you know I, I don't want the client dictating how sharp a turn is or or the movements of the bike because it's not that hard for a, 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 a an evil client to take apart the client's code and inject some bad code of their own so just having a server control all the you know aspects that need that level of security just makes it to where you know cheaters can't take over your game, so to speak. Uh, 
collision handling and that kind of stuff is all being happened on the server. Um, so there's a bunch of imaginary boxes in this light trail on my left, and they're spread out at an interval that prevents me from passing through them without colliding with one. And so that is how I got around the collision detection issues. Um, obviously the whole VR environment and all the graphics are being rendered on the client. Um, as we saw earlier, the server is just that command line. Uh, but yeah, this is the game. I can steer the bike around. Uh, if that other AI opponent was actually forced to stay within the map, I could try to get him to crash. Or I could just play it safe and just, you know, try to avoid him for as long as possible and hope he just accidentally runs into something. But there's no fun in that. Um, I have a nice little mini-map which is being rendered from a camera that is above the map. Apparently I crashed while I was doing that. Uh, and it displays to a texture that is constantly being updated, which is really, really cool. Um, the light trails, I have a little more work to do on them. You notice as I go up very behind this light trail, it does this little rotation -y thing right there. Um, and that's not quite what I want. I would like them to be more solid line, vertical lines. That kind of trail in your wake. But right now, they're more like a cylinder that trails behind you. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, but the, this is probably a lot better than I, I originally imagined I was going to do during the, this semester. I like my neon lighting for the grid. Uh, that's pretty pretty sweet. Uh, so yeah, uh, there's a few other particle effects I want to work on that I've seen online that I think would be really cool. Uh, making where the grid intensity like kind of flashes or pulsates a little bit, I think would be really neat. Just to try to make the environment less static. Work on the model, I think, would be great. I'd either switch out this model for one that I make myself, uh, which will take a long time because I've never made any kind of 3D modeling, or make it to where maybe you sit lower on the bike and have this area be transparent, like a glass. I think that would increase the immersion a lot more, and it'll reduce the uh, possibility of VR sickness since you're more in like a cockpit at that point and you're looking around. So when the bike does a rotation, it's easier to feel like you're not making the rotation. So yeah, that's my project. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to work on, and I look forward to working on it some more. I'm going to crash one last time.